speaking of TIE Fighter, and like I said, it's going to be very strategic in how I'm teaching you. I'm going to be showing you certain things. The one thing we're definitely not going to use is we're not going to use a sphere. We're actually going to take a cube and make a cube round. But I'm jumping the gun. Um, we're going to first have to set up some reference images. So Maya doesn't even need to be open right now. First thing I want you to do is I want you to go back to the server. If you forgot how to get there, you should have an alias. Just in case you don't have an alias, what you do is you hit go network. In case you still don't have an alias, go network. Under all, there should be MAI for server landing right here. I'm already connected, so it's not showing up. Once you hit MAI for server, you're going to hit I for classes. To avoid all of that, once you're connected, right click and choose make an alias. And you won't ever have to do that. Now, I've been directing you to the submit folder. Great work, everyone, getting all your submit folder stuff in here. Um, but we have two other folders there for you. The share folder is for you if you are changing computers. For example, in a half hour in flex time, if Daniel's in here in flex time, but then I have a video production, or excuse me, a digital filmmaking student in here that wants to use that same computer, Daniel has to move. I know that's not but the film student has like six gigabytes to move, and the Maya files that we have are like maybe a tenth of a gigabyte at most. So you can throw in any file that you want onto Animation Share, go onto any other computer, and drag it off. And then that file will be there. It's basically like a USB drive through our classroom network. That's called Anim Share. Now the problem is, is that anyone can do anything to that folder. The submit folder you're already familiar with, but the pickup folder is where I'm going to have you grab the stuff all the time. So find, go to 4 anim, go to 4 anim pickup, and you'll notice, oh, G's got a lot of stuff over here. He's got a Mario already. He's got a rig. He's got, what are all these things? Don't get distracted. Right now, we have Unity. No, don't get distracted. I want you to find the JPEG called TIE Fighter. What's UV box? Don't worry, we'll get there. Grab TIE Fighter and drag it onto your desktop. So just drag and drop it. Find TIE Fighter under animation pickup and just drag it onto your desktop. Neighbors help neighbors. You're surrounded by at least two other people. Ask them for help. All right, so either one, two, one of those two on the other side. Just go ahead and plop on there. I'm really sorry. All right, so this is our reference image. It's actually overkill. We don't need the top view. That's the top view, and that's the, the front view. We're really only going to need the front view and then our side view, okay? And we're going to have to place these in Maya, okay? So let's do that first. Everyone... Open up a brand new scene. So if Maya was still open, go ahead and hit File, New Scene. File, New Scene. And hit Don't Save. Oh, my one. Or Save your file. File, New Scene. Let's just save it right now just to be safe. File, Save Scene. Go ahead and save it on your desktop. Don't worry, we'll clean our desktop shortly. And just call it TIE Fighter Start. We're actually going to do several save as is this time. We're going to have copies of copies. We'll just call it TIE Fighter. We'll just call it TIE, T-I-E. Who knows what TIE actually stands for? Nope. T-I-E. Anyone know what it stands for? Come on. No one? Twin Ion Engine. I don't know. Oh, that one? No, it's backwards. No, no. Imperial. No. The Imperial Empire. Yeah. I never thought of that. It's Twin Ion Engines. What's an Ion Engine? I have no idea. Okay. Please make sure if you don't have your reference image on your desktop, you're going to lose it once you set it up tomorrow. Okay? So, 
let's get our image. Make sure our image is on our desktop by dragging it to the desktop. All right. Okay. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to place this image in our thing. The easiest way to do that is something called an image plane. So an image plane is an object that's really hard to select, basically. So go to create up top, but we're not going to go to polygon this time. We're going to go all the way down to free image plane. Don't bother with the options. Just hit free image plane. Free image plane. Bam. OK. And we have this little green thing here. Now, we have to go to a new window. Everyone ready? Is my helper on? Yeah. This is our channel box window. One, two over. This is called the attribute editor. And we're going to start to really live in this spot as well. So the attribute editor right here is what we got to click on. You guys see it? So that, this is our channel box, this thing right here, attribute editor. OK. That's right. Yes. Oh, you didn't. You didn't. Good, good, good. Got it, Roman? All right. Then right here, it says image name. If you don't see anything in your attribute editor, it's because your image plane isn't selected. If you need to select again, you have to kind of drag a box around it. It's hard to click on. It's designed that way. So just drag a box around it, then it'll get selected. Make sure you're in your attribute editor. And then to, to choose that picture, you're just going to click on this folder right here. Click on that folder. It looks like where you're saving it, but it's called the directory path. So click on that folder, hit desktop, and then find that image, the TIE Fighter image. And hit open, and you're set. Just to repeat, gonna repeat the whole process, right? I'm gonna go here to create, free image plane. I'm gonna hit my attribute editor, which is this guy. I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna hit the folder. I'm gonna hit tie, fida, open. It should be under the pickup folder on your animation. It should be on your desktop. Thank you, neighbors. All right. I'm going to hide my attribute editor and my channel box. So if I just click on them again, they go away. All right. Next, we're going to need to be in our four view, our orthographic view. How do we get to our four view? Class, what button do I press to get to our four view? Spacebar. Space bar. Thank you. OK. We also notice our image plane is a little small. OK. It's also not centered. So I lied. I said our four view. We want to go to our front view. Four view, front view. OK. With my image plane selected, make sure it's green on the border. I'm going to hit scale, R. And I'm going to make it bigger until the wingspan is at is probably five on each side or ten wide. We're gonna make ours really big. Why not, right? Or maybe not ten. Let's see. How is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe a little bit more. And notice when I'm hitting scale, I'm hitting the middle one. Let me undo. Undo again. So go to spacebar. I'm in my four view. Hit spacebar. I'm in my front view. And then I'm going to. Select it and hit scale for R. I'm going to grab the center. Don't grab, make it wide this way because that changes the aspect ratio, right? So grab that center one. I'm going to make it bigger until it's about 10 wide. How do I know it's 10 wide? I count boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A little bit more. Nine, 10. And we can work in ish. Now, it's really hard to see on my screen. I think it's easier to see on your screen. You have a thicker line on your grid, both vertically and horizontally. You want to get that so that this front view, this windshield, is intersecting right in the middle. So we're going to have to move this guy over to the left.
and down until it's, it's looking better, right? And I'm actually going to go over to my computer so I can get even closer to it. I want to get that as close to getting down the middle as possible. And I know it's really hard to see the thicker line on my screen, but it's easier to see on your screen. Oh, okay. So, first important part, it's, it's bisected by the darker lines on both the front and side view. It's about 10 wide. Now, next, we need the side view, the wing, to line up with that. Okay? So, we're going to duplicate our image plane. How do I duplicate something? Command E. Command E, yep. It's fine. Yeah, controls PCs. I know. For you, you see. We're going to command D, and remember, when you command D something, it lays it right on top. So immediately after hitting command D, just kind of push it to the front or to the back. Okay? And then we want to rotate it 90 degrees to a side. How do I know which, which way? I can hit rotate, and it's already telling me to rotate it along the green. But I can also go to my channel box, and I can hit rotate 90 Right here, nine zero, bam. Okay. Now, if you look at my side view, you'll notice, hey, I can't see the grid, Mr. G. What's wrong? Well, if, let me try to show you. If you look up here, right, the origin line here, this, this picture is in front of that origin line. So if I push it back, so I hit W, and look, right when it crosses that, that darker line, the origin, it'll get a grid. Ready? Grid. No grid? Grid. No grid? Grid. No grid? Grid. No grid? Grid. So. All right. Next on my side view, on the side view now, I want to do the same thing. I want to have my wing bisected by those or origins, right? The origin lines. And they're hard to see on my screen. They're a little easier to see on your screen. That darker line is right here, and that darker line is right there. So again, I'm gonna move it, and I'm gonna have to move it up. Right? And again, I'm gonna get on my computer screen. So when you're done, your perspective view, it looks a little screwy. One looks way higher, one looks lower because the wing was below it. But now I'm making them the same. I know I'm doing it right because if I measure up the front view, the top and the bottom of the wing, those are pretty lined up. And the top and the bottom view here are pretty lined up. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, class, when you get a reference image and the side view is a different size than the front view. Then you got to do all sorts of tricks.
Um, but this one is, they, they've drawn it to scale, right? So everything's kind of equal with everything else. So I don't have to do a lot of those other things. That's why I chose this image, right? So your, your perspective looks like this. Your front view looks like this. Your side view looks like that. So if you're looking like this, you're in good shape. And then the last thing, before we start modeling, the last thing we want to do is we want to push over. We want to get these out of the way so we don't accidentally click on them. So I'm going to take my image plane and get it out of the middle and just kind of send it over. Notice, does anything change here? Right? Our orthographic views are fixed. In a two-dimensional world, there's no perspective. So the further something moves away, you can't tell on our orthographic views, and that's cool. So I'm gonna just gonna send that way off. And the same thing for the other, the front view one, send it way off so that we still see them and they're still perfectly bisected in our orthographic views, but in my perspective view, it's like they're barely there and they're really, really, really far away. And that's what I want. So you know you're doing it right if it looks like that. Okay. So yeah, really, really important. Front view has the, the cockpit on the origins. The side view has the wing on the origin. Because we're going to use those as guides for our model. Okay. And then John, just ship them far away now. Once you get them lined up, ship them far away. Okay. Now, like I said, do not, do not, class, do not, do a sphere. A sphere will give you a bad time. Okay? One, the first reason, if I do a sphere, problem number one, can anyone take a guess? Why can't we do a sphere? Too many faces. Exactly. That's actually the best reason. That's a crap ton. That's a lot of selecting. That's a lot of verticing. That's a lot of making sure everything's lined up and perfect. Yeah. Who's got that kind of time? I do. Right? <laughs> it's a Dylan. That's All right. The other problem, what's the other problem? I've been pointing it out. Triangles, right? This little top here with all the triangles, that might cause some problems later. We can work around it, but this lesson. So we're going to make a three by three by three cube. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit create. Polygon, and we're going to go to cube. Just in case you had to reset your settings or something, hit the option box. Oops, that's not a cube. Mr. G, can't see anymore. Cube, options. And make sure that width, height, and depth are three, three, and three. And we're going to hit, we're going to hit create. This is going to be our cockpit. Okay. Now let's go to our, our side view here, or our front view. We'll notice my cube is small. Yeah? So the first thing we want to do is we want to scale up our cube so that it's kind of the size of the cockpit. So I'm going to hit R. Okay. And when you're scaling it, make sure you grab the, the center box. Don't just scale it this way and then this way because then you're going to have a really skinny TIE fighter, right? So you want to make sure you, one, two, make sure you grab the center one and scale it up so that it's, it fits somewhere around there. Now I know what some of you are saying, Mr. G, this is a cube. That's a sphere. Now, here comes the fun. We need to make this a sphere. We need to make a cube a sphere. We need to circle a square, right? And if you've ever taken art or engineering, you know that's kind of a, a term. Circling a square or squaring a circle. It's one of those things that like 
people don't like to do. Okay. I'm actually going to make it a little bit smaller than the cockpit because I'm going to pull stuff out. It's usually easier to kind of make it bigger, like to kind of balloon it. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Like that. Okay. Our first step and in making our cube a sphere is I'm going to select every center face. And remember, there's six, not four. So I'm going to go to face mode. Right click, face mode. And I'm going to choose one, two, holding the shift key, three, four. And then don't forget the bottom and don't forget the top. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to hit scale. R. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm waiting. People are still selecting. So right click, make sure you're in face mode. Select the center faces. And then using my reference image here, I'm going to scale and it's already making it rounded. Kind of try to breathe with it. It looks relaxing. So I'm going to kind of just move these out until it kind of looks more spherish. So you don't want to go too big because then it looks like some weird geometric thing. You don't want to go too small. I just want to push it out a little bit and it already starts to look more like a sphere. Don't believe me, hit three. And it looks really looks like a sphere. So with one trick, we're already halfway to a sphere. Okay. But Mr. G, we still got these corners. That's what you're asking, right? Well, that's going to have to wait. Okay, everyone, please.